The Stanley Parable was one of the first non-traditional games I remember going viral before going viral was really a thing. I remember seeing the trailer and it was so different. I had no idea what it was about, but I had to get it. I played it immediately and absolutely loved it. I squirreled my way to almost every ending possible at least twice. And even today, whenever I dig through my memory for my favorite narrative games, it still rises towards the top. Which is funny because the Stanley Parable doesn't actually have a solid or linear narrative. It rebels against things as ordinary as beginnings and ends. Developed by Galactic Cafe and written by Davy Reedon, Parable is a very heady game, running philosophical circles around players, dizzying us for our entertainment. There are multitudes of insightful essays and analyses on Parable's worth as a critical narrative about game design or about the philosophical concept of free will. However, what I'd like to tackle today is the emotional value of playing the Stanley Parable. As in, what lessons can we take from this game that can better our real life? Parable is all about choice. What does your choice mean? Anything at all? Everything? Unlike traditional games, Stanley, the playable character, doesn't have a gun. He doesn't have special powers or great agility. As Stanley, you can walk. That's it. Walking is the gameplay. Walking is your way of choosing, of moving forward, of rebelling, or of submitting. But that's all you need. With a few simple choices, you can come to very different and fulfilling endings, making every crossroad significant and interesting. So why do we like this game, when all you do is walk and listen and choose between doors? It's not actually that strange. According to self-determination theory, our main motivation to play any game is to replenish a mixture of three psychological resources, mastery, autonomy, and relatedness. We need to keep these psychological resources full and balanced to optimize our well-being and mood management skills. Real-life responsibilities wear these resources down, so we're constantly subconsciously foraging them from our everyday hobbies and the media we engage with. Traditional games tend to focus on providing us feelings of mastery and competence, shooting things, leveling up, gaining skills, unlocking levels. These things feel great and serve their own purpose for us psychologically. They give us a confidence-boosting sense of growth and accomplishment. Although there are definitely very few opportunities for feelings of mastery in Parable, the structure of the game gives us a big dose of autonomy or agency, that crucial feeling we need of being in control and influencing the environment in ways that are meaningful to our value system and interests. Every corner of the map and every choice we make is so important that every ending we achieve feels earned and deserved. The feeling of freedom to do what we want, whether that's to follow the rules, to break them, or to go exploring, gives us a great kick of agency. However, this isn't about being selfish. Autonomy isn't simple independence or self-centeredness. We could autonomously decide to work with others. Like for some of us, the best endings might be the ones where we willingly and autonomously follow or cooperate with the narrator. The need for autonomy is all about being free to act in a way that's true to ourselves and seeing the world around us change because of it. Decisions in real life can be exhausting since we often have to make more compromises than not and the results can be only subtle or invisible. With so much to consider, major choices in real life can be anxiety inducing. We work hard to factor in the needs, desires, and more often than we'd like, the judgment of others. But as Stanley, everything's very simple and the results are immediate. Stanley doesn't need guns or a double jump to make this game fulfilling and psychologically interesting. The power to choose is enough of a superpower, a power we all have and have to treat responsibly. First, I'd like to pay a nod to how important the setting is for this game. It could have taken place in a city, or a forest, or a spaceship, but it's an office building. The Stanley Parable is a meeting of the ordinary, the mundane or insignificant elements of real life, and the extraordinary significance of choice and autonomy. An office building and an office job are traditionally used as a setting to evoke the dominant narrative of living a dull, choiceless existence in a grey cubicle under blinking fluorescent lights. It plays on this nameless idea that an office is an institution that seems unfeeling, with no room for individuality, creativity, or meaningful interactions. Whether or not this is true, working off of this stereotype makes an office setting the perfect arena for rebelliously expressing individualism in meaningful choices. As 
Stanley, we can run rampant without fear of judgment. All judgment possible has been boiled down into our one form of company, the narrator. The narrator's voice tells us with a prickly attitude when we've made a quote, wrong choice, make enough bad choices, and he scolds us, insults us, and maybe even abandons us. The narrator gives us the adversity we crave. He alone has expectations of us. He wants us to live out the story he wrote, but we're the one with the power to actually do it or not. He's a not quite godlike entity that seems so perfectly sophisticated and frantic, a recognizable parent-teacher personality we've always wanted to rebel against. What's most important about the narrator is that our decisions wouldn't be so interesting or meaningful without him to react. Otherwise, we'd just be wandering quietly through an empty office building until we get bored. People think the gameplay is the walking around, but it's actually what happens between the narrator and the player that makes the game. With Parable, we play at being rebellious and being able to consider our values and interests first. This is particularly fun or healing for those who have been poignantly burdened by the skill of being considerate of others or too troubled by the invisible walls of social expectations. We're quietly reminded to value our own free will over more arbitrary social conventions, a lesson we all need to remember the older we get. Although I usually talk about the beneficial parts of games on this channel, I think it's important to address some unhelpful sequences as well. Many players have experienced some substantial dread while playing this game, and even after leaving it, a brief visit to forums about this game can reveal some deep conversations about how the game aggravated their existential anxiety. This isn't surprising. Parable handles themes of free will, choice, and living a dignified, meaningful life very sharply. In Parable, we can accidentally start to see life through the narrator's perspective, one that can remind us of an overbearing parent who believes that there's one right way and many wrong ways to choose or to live. From the beginning of the game, as the narrator describes Stanley's happiness at being told to push buttons every day for his job, it's made clear to us that something must be very wrong with Stanley, or us, to have the job in life he has. Much of the game explores how someone like Stanley can and should break out of his previous button-pushing lifestyle, his old wrong way of living, by getting out there and making better, more meaningful choices. That he has somehow been brainwashed and duped by the institution he works for, and if only he, or we, could wake up, we could break free and return to the wild of independent, individualistic thought. This is a traditional narrative we've seen over and over again before, and although it's usually delivered to us with good intentions, it feels a little unhelpful. We're told we're living the wrong life unless we're free to do as we want when we want, but we're never offered applicable advice on how exactly we're supposed to break free from our daily responsibilities. Many of our social expectations are arbitrary and don't need to pinch us as much as we let them, and this game serves as a good reminder that we're ultimately responsible for our choices, and so we should cherish them more. But for many players, leading lives full of compromises or sacrifices, they haven't been brainwashed, there is no mind-controlling institution to escape. They are doing their best to take care of themselves and others even if that means they push buttons. Unfortunately, some players can feel this heavy philosophical burden of meaningful choice placed on their shoulders a little too roughly. The voice of the game can be added to the many in real life telling them that no matter what they do, something's wrong. Players can leave this game feeling different kinds of dread, career anxiety, status anxiety, or a void of purpose. One particular ending, the apartment ending, is a cruel trick by the narrator. He traps us and details our life as Stanley as an office worker who lives such a boring, unfulfilled, choiceless existence that he deludes himself with the adventures of a daydream that plays out exactly as the game The Stanley Parable does. This ending breaks the fourth wall. The narrator tells us, the actual player, in a foreboding, omniscient way how playing games is also just another robotic, button-pushing way of passing time in the wrong way. He tells us we're just using the game to escape real life and run away from how meaningless our life is. This ending, apt at finding the weak points of its audience, can spark some real pain or discomfort for some. It chides the players for playing the game. It reinforces the fear that we all have committed ourselves to the wrong job or to the wrong hobbies. It strengthens the anxiety that we're not living our life the way we should. Personally, this felt unfair. While Parable does motivate us to look more closely at our choices, at what is keeping us from leaving behind fantasies and toxic lifestyles, it does little to comfort players after scolding them for having chosen the wrong paths in their real lives that led them to playing this game. 
In this way, this game might serve as a good exercise for remembering the distinction between living independently and living autonomously. Parable might praise independence, taking control and keeping it, no matter what, that we must make our own meaning in life for ourselves and by ourselves. It's a very tempting and attractive story, but unrealistic for many of us living alongside others. Independence is an ideal many individualistic cultures hold up, the lone wolf figure that makes their own future and is completely free. But the realities of daily life don't support independence unless you're young and live alone and are self-employed. The good news is that we can shift our attention from independence to autonomy, which is actually a psychological resource we need for our emotional well-being. Instead of focusing on getting what we want on our own and abandoning all outside influences, we can still have an office job, still make an effort to get along with coworkers, still make sacrifices for our family, and still enjoy button-pushing hobbies while maintaining our autonomy as long as our everyday decisions align with our values and ethics. When we're motivated by autonomy, we break free from needing to live life in a specific way that others lay out for us. We don't need to feel bad for not wanting to become the heroic lone wolf many idolize. We don't need a specific job or a specific salary or to accomplish everything on our own in order to be impressive. We can find fulfillment and meaning in deciding when it's important to work with others, when a job is worth our time, and what hobbies we want to enjoy, even if popular narratives tell us we're wrong. Last Minute Consolations A healing perspective that Parable silently offers is the fact that the game has no true ending. Of the several endings, none of them are considered the true ending. You decide which ending is real, if any. There is no wrong ending, just like real life. There is no set path of correct decisions that will lead you to the only acceptable way to live. Instead, you choose your own ending. The same way choice is our power, we also have the power of defining our success. Just like in life, you decide whether or not a destination is meant for you or whether to keep moving forward. This perspective is helpful for anyone who has felt nervous that they aren't living the way they should, anyone who has had a narrator in their own life, and anyone who has felt unsure of the power of their choices in life. Although players struggling with the concepts of meaning and free will might need to armor themselves with mindfulness and self-compassion before stepping into Stanley's anxious shoes, there is still a lot we can gain from a few hours of walking, listening, and indulging in the agency of choosing our destinies in this game. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more videos about games, movies, and mental health, please go ahead and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And as always, happy playing.